All right, good evening. Uh, welcome to Butner Fellowship. Uh, we're going to continue in our Acts Bible study. Uh, let's uh, start off with a, a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you now for your goodness and your grace. Uh, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your everlasting love. Father God, we thank you. Uh, before we ever knew the God of love, you first loved us. And that you had your son down the cross for our sins while we were yet sinners. And we thank you for that right now. We ask you to continue to bless this ministry. Uh, bless myself and Pastor El Page as we continue to speak forth the truth of your word, right and divided. Yes, we ask you just continue to touch us each and every uh, <clears throat> touch us as we give us the strength to stand before the uh, throne of grace boldly. Uh, touch each and every one in this ministry, oh God. Bless uh, both, both uh, bless us each and every one of us, both individually as well as collectively. And Father God, we thank you right now for what you've done in our lives, what you've done at the cross. And Father God, we thank you for what you're going to do. We ask you to continue to keep us safe, protect us, oh God. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on, but give us the heart and the mind after Christ. And Father God, we ask you now that you touch uh, uh, the leaders of this country, oh God, that we may live peaceful lives upon all men. Uh, we ask you now that you just continue to bless those who are in bereavement, bless those who are going through circumstances, oh God. Uh, the media, there's a lot of different things on the news, oh God. Help us to be confident in our minds based on what we know in the scripture. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Uh, Acts uh, 17 is where we left off. Uh, just wanted to give an update. I uh, had somebody from, uh, uh, had a guy from Texas, uh, Dallas, Texas. He uh, texted me today and he said he used to go to Bishop T.D. Jake's church. Uh, but for the last month, he's been watching my videos online. Amen. And so he Amen. asked if I knew if there was a grace uh, church that teaches the Pauline Grace message in Dallas. I uh, texted him back, I don't know of any personally, but I will call and see around and see if I can find out. Amen. But he's seeking for the truth, and he no Amen. longer goes to that church. But he's been watching my videos, and also uh, uh, Brother Ron Knight out in California, the guy I told you guys about. So he's been watching Amen. that. And so he's been uh, seeking the truth, and he, he's uh, getting more into the grace of, the grace message. And so I, I told him I really appreciate it, uh, and, and I told him to, to continue to uh, stay encouraged, yes. because now he's going to get a lot of flack. Uh, but but we, we know that as we persevere in the truth of God's word, we're going to get the rejection and those things, but we have to stand fast uh, within the grace where God, Christ has made us free. Uh, Acts 17 is where we left off. I believe it was right around verse 20, uh, 21, I believe. Yes, verse, verse, verse 18 is where we left off. Verse, uh, Acts 17, verse 18. Because we left off t talking about the Epicureans and the Stoics. And we left off talking about uh, those Greek philosophers and all those different things. Uh, and we were talking about it because, uh, and they said that Paul uh, was teaching some strange thing uh, because he was preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. Uh, so understanding that uh, that's what kind of what we left off at. And understand that there, there were two different extremes of the Greek philosophy, uh, which the Epicureans were, you know, you only live once type of people, so do everything while you can. And the Stoics were more conservative, and they were more uh, not into those things, not into emotions and those things. But uh, Paul was teaching Christ and him crucified, which gives us a, a, a steady level ground uh, to walk on. So they thought that Paul was preaching some strange thing. Uh, look at verse 19. It says, And they took him and brought him unto Arapathus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speaketh is. Now understand he said this what? New doctrine. When you, and it was new at this time, but when you preach this grace message and, and you're right to divide the word of truth, people will always say that's new doctrine. We've never heard of that before. But really it's been in the Bible for over 2,000 years, Amen. right? And so, uh, so, so they, 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 and it's funny how, we, I don't know if you guys have ever done this, but I, I've been in a situation where I was speaking to a group of people. And the main people that I was speaking to rejected it, but the people who were standing around listening wanted to know more. And that's what we see going on here. And it says, they took him and brought him unto Epirica, saying, May we know what this new doctrine where thou speaketh is. So now they want to know more. And as we're going to get into this, you're going to see that your job is to preach the truth. Right? And like I, I always tell you guys, my job is to preach the truth. You can do whatever you want with it after that. Amen. Right? And so that's what, that's, what, that's what we have to see. Even in 
the midst of persecution, you got to speak forth the truth and stand firm on the word of God. Verse 20, for thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. See, this is strange to them because they had never heard of this before, right? Uh, we, we would know, we would know, therefore, what these things mean. So, but basically, they're, they're wanting to know what these things mean, right? And so, so they're asking uh, Paul that this is this new doctrine. It's strange to our ears, but yet we want to know. Right, and that's why uh, uh, when you talk about the, the the word of God rightly divided, it's strange to people. They're gonna call it new doctrine. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be strange to their ears because they've never heard it before. Right? They've never heard it before. Uh, so understand that. And it, it's funny how saved members of the body of Christ, uh, uh, some of our denominational brothers, it's strange how they don't want to hear about Pauline truth and the grace message. It, it, it's, it's so funny to me. Uh, and, and it's strange to them because they don't rightly divide the word of truth, right? So they don't even want to hear it. They don't even want to hear it. Members in the body of Christ who understand that Jesus died to pay for their sins, they understand that, but yet they don't want to come into the knowledge of the truth, right? And so it's, it's, it's a funny thing how men who are out in the world will be first to hear the word before people who are, who are already in the body of Christ. The man, it's crazy because the minute you talk to religious folk about the Bible, they get mad and they don't want to talk about scripture. They only want to talk about what they think they know. So when you start saying scriptures, they don't want to go through all that, right? Then you get too deep on them and all that kind of stuff, right? But how it, to come to an understanding of God's word, God's word is the best inter God is the best interpreter of, of Himself, and that's how the Holy Ghost teaches according to First Corinthians two and thirteen. But we teach not the wisdom that man's wisdom teaches, but that which the Holy Ghost teaches by comparing spiritual with spiritual. So if you want to come to uh, an understanding and agreement in the Scriptures, you have to come there through God, not through what you say or not through what I say, right? So understand that. Verse twenty, uh, verse twenty one. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time and nothing else but either to tell or to hear some what? New thing. Some new thing. And you notice that it, it, this is, the, this is the, 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 you know how we have the news, right? Everybody wants to watch the news because they want to hear about something new that's going on. Right? And it's the same with these people here. They, want the, 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 uh, they, they wanted to hear the, what this new thing. Right? And understand, if you watch the news, I don't really pay too much attention to it, but if you watch the news, it comes on there. They got, they got a 5 o'clock a.m., mm -hmm. 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. You got the evening news. You got midnight news. You got news all day long. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's all day long, and it, it, it's depressing most of the time because it, if, it, if it does not... Uh, uh, have anything to do with what's going on in the world? That's that's really uh, the, the prince of this earth, the, the prince of this world, which is Satan. It's a satanic policy of evil. So all they're showing you is somebody killing somebody. And uh, we, we have the recent thing now with uh, uh, the, yeah, the young guy uh, that got shot in Missouri, uh, Michael Brown. You have that stuff going on, and, and it's so. It's so sad that the more you watch these things, all you're going to do is get depressed. Mm -hmm. And what they're really trying to do, the agenda that the news is trying to push, is one of their own. Mm -hmm. I was want people trying to overcome evil with good, like the scriptures say. Exactly. They want to show people trying to riot. Exactly. exactly. And, and, and it's funny how I was watching another news clip on Fox News, uh, and, and it was a shooting going on. I can't remember the exact details of what happened. Uh, but they had a little, a, a little young black kid on there. Uh, and they uh, asked the kid, well, what do you think about the shootings and everything? He said, well, I'm going to start carrying me a gun. Mm -hmm. And then they cut the news off. They cut his, the kid's interview off. But when you, watch the, when you watch the rest of the interview, they had a behind the scenes. The reporter asked the young man, well, why do you want to carry a gun? And the little boy said, because I want to be a police officer. Mm -hmm. So they cut that they off of the news because they want to push a certain agenda. Yeah. Wow. So understand, just like these people wanted to know yeah. something new, it's no different than today, right? So understand that that stuff is depressing and all that stuff. But if you want to watch it, go ahead. But, but, but there's nothing new. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9 says there's nothing new under the sun. Right? There's no, the same stuff that was going on back here is going on now. The Greeks sought this new thing just as the Gentiles do today. Everybody wants to know what's going on today. And we're watching the news and getting depressed and everything else, right? So everybody wants to know that because it's only designed to keep you interested. 
they're not going to have it uh, 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 on the news. They're not going to have it somebody up there teaching grace. Because then they're gonna, you, people are not interested in that. People are only interested in controversy, drama, killing somebody and rioting. All. People are only interested in nonsense, right? So understand, there's nothing new under the sun. People, what they, they were doing the same thing back here, and we're doing the same thing today. Verse 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill. We, you know, the, the, we in, in, in Athens, in Greece, in that Greek culture, Mars Hill and all of that. And said, ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too what? Ye too superstitious. Right? Paul, as he always did, he met people right where they are. That's right. Right? Just like the word of God. When you teach the word of God, that's why a lot of times now I like to listen to people when they talk to me. Because the more people talk, the more in the, the more in their faith. The more you can tell where they are in their faith. The more they talk, the more you can tell. So therefore, you know where to meet the man of the God, right? And so that's that's what's going on here. As he's doing that, they, uh, Paul said they were too superstitious. You know, don't step on the line. You know, don't split the pole and all this kind. Of, all that stuff is, is mythology and superstitious type stuff. Uh, uh, we're playing football. Uh, the, the, the new video game, the, 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 the Madden football game, they said that everybody who faces the cover gets hurt. So it's, a, it's the, the Madden curse, so they call it, you know. And all that stuff is superstition. And Paul is telling these uh, Athenians and these Epicureans and these Stoics, he said, listen, you guys are too superstitious, right? Look at, uh, look at verse number 23. For as I passed by and be, nope. beheld your what? Devotion. devotion. Now understand, now what is devotion? It means to what? To serve. To serve. Huh? Do religious. Like, uh, what is a devotion? To have devotion means to what? To worship. To worship. Right? To worship. Devotion means to worship. But notice who's worshiping here. The Jews and the Gentiles. Nope, these, these Athenians, right? Right, these Gentiles, these Athenians, they, but they were superstitious. But notice what they saved the unsaved. Unsaved, but yet they were having what? Devotion. Devotion and worship. Unsaved people have the same. When you hear about lost people, everybody is worshiping something. Right? Everybody has a viewpoint of God, whether it's wrong or right. Ever, because God had put in it's an innate nature in man to worship, right? You just have to understand how to worship the true and living God. But notice that even these unsaved men were still having devotions and worshiping, right? So just like you hear about people, well, what about what about people who may not don't have a Bible way out in these other countries? If you study their culture, that when you watch their practice, they're worshiping something. And because God has put in every man the, 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 the nature to understand that God does exist because of the things that are created, if they are seeking God's word, God will bring them the message of, of his word. Amen. So understand that even these lost people were having devotions. Mm. And look what Paul says. I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God capital letters, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship him, declare I unto you. So they're so superstitious and they're worshiping all these gods, they even set one for the true and living God, just in case we forget somebody. Wow. You see that? So they said, to the unknown God. You know, we don't really know about him, but we'll put him up here anyway, because we got all these other different gods up here, right? So, so they didn't want to leave anybody out or leave anything out. But Paul says, you're ignorantly worshiped it, uh, uh, this one, right? So, so, so understand they were so superstitious that they didn't want to leave anything out, right? What, what, uh, as ambassadors for Christ, our job is to take people from ignorance to knowledge. But when we were in a denominational church, we were so ignorant. How in the world can you take somebody from, take somebody from ignorance to knowledge when you're ignorant of the scriptures yourself? That's why we have to study to show ourselves approved unto God. And how do we do that? By rightly dividing the word of truth. Because you cannot bring somebody from ignorance to knowledge if you don't know anything. That's why you talk to most denominational people and religious people, they don't know enough scripture to get them from here to out of the door. Right? And the, everything they want you to do is, well, my pastor said this. 
I, one thing I always tell you guys, I want you to, even if you hear it from me, study it out yourself. Because I don't want you to get in a conversation when you say what my pastor said. Because it's not about me. It's about the scriptures. Now, if you want somebody to talk to me, then you can call me and say, you can talk with my pastor because he can, he can explain this better to you or something like that. But don't be talking about my pastor said this and my pastor said that. Mm -hmm. Say the word says this and the word says that. Because that's the only thing that's important. I'm just a teacher. I'm a helper of your joy. That's it. Right? Yeah, so that's what the Bereans, the Bereans did. The Bereans, yeah. They studied that study, thing and yeah, see Act, if it was so that uh -huh. Paul and his... Acts 17 and 11, we read, it says that these were more noble than those in Thessalonica mm -hmm. and that they did what? Study that word. They, they received the word first with all what? Readiness of mind, right? You have to have a readiness of mind to receive the word, uh, 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 searching the scriptures daily to see whether these things be so, right? So that's what we have to, even if you hear it from me, just because I know it, it's not going to help you if you don't know it. That's right. That's why I said study to show thyself. You can't gain any kind of sanctification based on my walk and my knowledge. You have to have your own. But my job is to teach it to you, and your job is to study it out to see whether these things be so. Right? Yeah, so you think that um, because of the brands, how they studied the scriptures, that that's why Paul said in 2 Tim Timothy 2 and 5, 2 and 15, to study to show thyself and prove, because he was talking about them and how eager and readiness of mind that they had, that they would search out the scriptures. Yeah, and... and, and, and in context, in 2 Timothy 2.15, he wasn't talking about the Bereans, but in context, he was talking about those who, because some people, if you read the next verse, uh, 2 Timothy 2 and uh, 17, 18, it talks about Hymenus and Philetus, and how they had erred talking about the resurrection. So, what, because some people were saying that we're going to have to go through the tribulation. And, and saying that the res, uh, the, I mean the tribulation, not the resurrection, but the tribulation is already passed. So there, they, and it caused them to err in their faith. So what Paul is saying is that you got to rightly divide the word of truth, because you have to understand that the resurrection, that the tribulation has not come yet, because we won't be in it. So that's why he was in that context. But you can also equate that to the uh, to the Bereans, because if you study the word, and, and, and it's funny how, because even before I came into right division, I've always studied the word. But because I didn't know how to rightly divide the word of truth, I did not have an overall view of how God wants us to view his word. I was just studying the chapter and the verse for what it meant in that chapter and verse as a part for what it means throughout the whole plan of God. You see that? Uh, go to John 4 real quick. This, this issue of worshiping ignorantly. I'm going to show you something here. Because... Many people worship God ignorantly. That's why Paul says in Romans 10 and 2, For I bear the record that they have a zeal of God, but it's not according to knowledge. And because it's not according to knowledge, many people ignorantly worship God. When you go to church and they say, oh, let's, let's worship him. Let's worship him. What do they do? Man. The men in the church say that. What, what, what happens? Yeah. Emotions, yeah. clapping, yeah. hands going. You know, that's not worship. Right? See, they have a zeal. They, they believe that to be worship. That's praise. Which it says in Psalms, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Anybody could go in there and do that. That don't make you more spiritual or closer to God because you come out, let's worship and you clap your hands. Anybody can praise. But to worship, there must be a relationship. And the worship, it has nothing to do with your physical emotion. The worship, we're going to see, it has everything to do with spirit and truth. It has nothing to do with emotions. Uh, John 4, let's start at verse 13 and get some context. I happened to be watching a TV show the other week, and they uh, re refer to this verse and just use it all out of context. But, uh, but we're going to get this to see about ignorantly worshiping. Uh, John 14, 13. I'm uh, sorry, John 4 and 13. Jesus answered and said unto her, now this is the, the woman at the well, uh, and Jesus answered and said unto her, whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst, uh, shall thirst, uh, thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Now what is he talking about here? He's talking about, uh, He's talking about physical water that when she drinks that she'll thirst again. Right? Right? Uh, uh, but he said the water that I give, 
Because this, the water has to do with what in, in the scripture? Healing, right? Not healing, but it has everything to do with what? No. The what? You said what? Spiritual. It's spiritual, but it has to do with the spirit. The spirit is what bringeth life, right? And so it's the, it's the living water, the, so the spirit of God. That's why it, when Jesus in John 2, when Jesus performed his first miracles, uh, when he... Uh, uh, Phil turned the water into wine. It said he had the six pots of stone that were what? Empty. Right? And he filled them with what? Told him to fill them with water. See, the six, the, the, the number six represents man. So the six stone pots that were empty rep represented Israel and the stone is of man's heart. So when he filled them with water, he brought them to life. He quickened them. Right? So understand that, that people think, oh, he turned water into wine. No, no, no. There's a spiritual significance to that. Other than just the natural, he turned water into wine. Everybody wanted to. But the, 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 the thing about it, he took the six stony pots of stone, which represents the stony heart of man in Israel at the time, and filled it with water to represent the spirit giving them life. And wine represents what in scripture? Joy. Joy. So once he fills them with the spirit, the living water, now they have joy. That's the purpose and significance of that miracle. Right? So understand here, Jesus is talking about filling them with his spirit, right? Then he says, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into what? Everlasting life. Because once the spirit indwells in you, you have what? Everlasting life. That's why we today have salvation as a present possession, because the spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, dwells in us today, right? Verse 15. Uh, the woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. So if somebody telling you that, you're like, man, I want that. You know, what is, whatever you're talking about, give me that. Now look at what Jesus tells her now. Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. Mm -hmm. the, the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Look what Jesus says now. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast five husbands, and he, he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, and that sayest thou truly. Some, they, somebody tried to use this scripture to say that this speaks against shacking. Which shacking is nowhere in this verse. Okay? So this is all out of context. Shacking is not a biblical word. Right? So, so, so understand what Jesus said. Jesus is just explaining to her that you say you don't have a husband. But yet you've had five husbands, and the one you, uh, 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 the one who is now not the husband, that says thou truly, right? So, so she had, and doesn't say anything about living together. It just says the person who she has could have been dating or anything. But that's not even the issue in this verse, right? But understand, look at what it says, verse uh, nineteen. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a what? Prophet. See, even when Jesus performed miracles. He performed those miracles because the kingdom of heaven was at hand to give them a glimpse of what's happening out here. But Jesus says, I didn't do this when he says, uh, uh, pick up that bed and walk. Right? He said, and they said, well, why do you say, when he said, thy sins be forgiven me. And they said, well, why would you say your sins be forgiven me? And he says, would you rather me say, pick up that bed and walk? Right? And he said, I did this so that you can see that the Son of Man had the power to forgive sin. See, it was a, it was a it was a, 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 a foreshadowing of what was to come in this kingdom. So what Jesus was doing here is giving her something about her life that nobody probably would have known in order to so she, that she could perceive that he was a prophet, which means that he was able to foretell the future. Who who is the only person that can see the end from the beginning? God. God. But did they not believe they needed healing, or did they not believe they, they can get it through? A single man, that they think they only can get it through the proper sacrifice at that time. Isaiah 53 says, by his stripes, we are what? Healed. Healed. So why but we... Isaiah 53 talks about who? Israel. Israel. No, no, but who? Christ, though. It's Christ. Okay. But they did not recognize. Yeah, right. I, see, you read Isaiah 53, and it's plain to you. Oh, okay. Just see, we can't it. anticipate revelation. It wasn't as plain to them. Because mm -hmm. okay. they couldn't go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And be like, okay, yeah, this that's the Messiah. Because had they known that, they would have received him and been healed and been all those things. But he had to do that to show them that all of these things that were prophesied about me, I am he. And they still were like, who is you? They didn't know. 
Okay. Still, and that's why, right? Okay. So everything Jesus is doing here is pointing out who he is, wow. right? Uh, verse 20, I will now here she goes, she says, I perceive that you are a prophet. Mm -hmm. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Now, now, look at, now look at what, so now she's saying, oh, okay, I see who you are. Our fathers even what? Worship in this mountain. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Why would he say Jerusalem? Uh-huh. And that's where they're gonna come, and Jesus is gonna come back and step foot. Because the holy city, Jerusalem, is gonna come down out of heaven. Right? Uh, and when Pastor Elphage preached the other week, uh, you guys had a question about that, about is heaven gonna come down? And he clarified that uh, uh beautifully with uh, Revelation 21. And it's not heaven gonna come down, but what? The new city, Jerusalem is gonna come down. Okay. Right? Uh but uh so yeah, so understand this. So she's telling Jesus this, but now look what Jesus says. Jesus said unto her, woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Look what he's saying now. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the what? So Jesus is saying your fathers worship but they worship ignorantly, like Paul is saying in Acts 17, right? That's, and, and that's what this is whole is talking about, right? This whole little, little section here. Jesus is explaining to her that you are not worshiping me because you don't know what you worship. For salvation is of the Jews. And now that I'm thinking about it, people love to use John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. How can you use that for you when you read one chapter over and it says, Jesus himself says, you know not what you worship, for salvation is up to who? Jews. Jews. I got a question. Uh -huh. uh, is it also him not recognizing her as a pure Jew? Because Samaritans, yeah, she was a Samaritan. Mixed. They yeah. were mixed. Yeah. They were Jew and Gentile uh -huh. mixed, and they had broke God's uh, covenant to yeah. not mingle with other nations. Uh -huh. So none of the Jews really recognized Samaritans as their real brother. That's a good point. That, that is absolutely right. That is absolutely right because that, and that's why he's saying to her, "You, your fathers and all, you don't know what you worship. Y'all yeah. think y'all doing it, but mm -hmm. you don't know what you worship. Just like the people in the religious church today." You think you're honoring and worshiping God, but you have no idea. Right? They're ignorantly worshiping him. Verse 23, but the hour cometh and now is. Now, now, now what is he saying? Look at what John is saying. I'm going to point out, point out something to you here. But the hour what? Cometh. Which means that's a what? Future. Future. And now what? Is. Which means that's what? Now. Present. Present. When you read the book of John, even the book of Revelation, his books are always a future tense. Now, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John represents Jesus in four different ways. Matthew represents him as what? Man. No. Sir, King. King. Mm -hmm. Mark represents him as what? Servant. Servant. Luke represents him as what? Humanity. Man, humanity. And John represents him as what? Deity God. Deity. Jehovah God. Now, who is the only one that can call the end from the beginning? Jehovah God. So he can say, my hour cometh, but now is. Right? Because he knows the end from the beginning. You see that? So understand understand what he's saying here. And if you read the books of John, even Revelation. Revelation is talking about a future time that has not come. Even John 8, uh, Jesus says that before Abraham was, I am. Notice he didn't say before Abraham was, I was. Uh -huh. He said before Abraham was, I am. Right? Because when when God was talking to Moses, and Moses said, who shall I say sent me? Who did he say? I am, I am that I am. See, people say, well, Jesus never claimed to be God. Yes, you got to read the scriptures. Several times. Right? And so understand that uh, John is a, for, is a, is a foreshadow. He, so he'll say things. Uh, as a matter of fact, go to John 3 real quick. I'll show you another example of how I'm thinking about it. Look at verse 11. 
verse 13. John 3, verse 13. He, now, this is Jesus talking to Nicodemus here. And look what he says. And no man hath ascended up to where? Heaven. But he that came down from where? Heaven. Even the Son of Man, which is what? In heaven. Now, how is he in heaven when he's standing right there talking to them? He's the God. Huh? I want you to see that, that when, when John talks about Jesus, it talks about him as knowing the end from the beginning because it represents him as Jehovah God. So he can say, nobody has ascended up to heaven but the one that came down from heaven. So he's talking about himself, right? Even the Son of Man, which is where? In heaven. Had he died and resurrected yet? Had he ascended back to the Father? No, but yet he's telling them that even the Son of Man, which is now where? In heaven. Why? Because God, Jesus Christ, is God. Right? And so it's a foreshadowing. I want you to see, when you read the book of John, you'll see statements like that. You know what I mean? Go back to uh, John 4 and 23. But the hour cometh that now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in what? Spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. Spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. Spirit and in truth. We don't worship ignorantly by throwing up hands and clapping and all of that. That's ignorant worship. But we worship him in what? Spirit, which is his spirit that dwells in us, and what? Truth. Which is the truth of his word. John 17 and 17, Jesus says, Sanctify them by thy truth. And thy truth is thy word. So if you want to be sanctified by truth, you have to know the word. And Paul Amen. tells us now, because he speaks the commandments of the Lord today, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 37, Paul says, If any man consider himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the commandments that I write are the commandments of the Lord. Right? And so the commandments of the Lord are being spoken by Paul. So in order to worship God, I have to know truth, which is Paul's 13 epistles, the mystery of Christ. And I have to have what? The spirit. That's how we worship. When we come together, we're worshiping. Why? Because it's in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. It don't take a whole bunch of noise. It don't take a whole bunch of all of this other stuff. It takes the spirit and truth. Right? Verse 25, look what she says. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he has come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am what? And look at that. Look at what he told him to claim it. <laughs> Go back to uh, Acts. You see that? Yep. This is recounted in, in all the other scriptures as well, but he didn't say that. I remember hearing it in the other scriptures, in the other four gospels, mm -hmm. he didn't say that. That's great. I never even noticed that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's a lot of things that when you really study it out and focus on those details, it's a lot of things. She said, I know he's going to come, in, which ETH means continual. So he's going to at some point come. He says, I'm he. The one who you're talking about, I'm he. And that was the whole point of him meeting with her, to give her everlasting life by, his, by the Spirit of God. Uh, Acts 17. But I wanted you to see that they were ignorantly worshiping. Her fathers, and they were ignorantly worshiping, just like Paul is talking about here. Look at verse 23. To the unknown God whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. Look at verse 24. God that made what? The world. And all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Now the fact that there is a creation lets you know that there is a creator. Right? Paul says in Romans 1 and uh, 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 19, the invisible things of God are clearly seen. So Paul, when, because they're ignorantly worshiping, he's about to bring them out of ignorance to knowledge. But understand, he's meeting them right where they are. Right? So now what he's doing, what he's saying is that, now God, the one you have, the unknown, he is the one, the true and living God that made the world and all the things therein. Now Paul is going to begin his speech now with God as the creator Understand this now, and he's going to end and he's going to bring them to God as being judge, right? Because the Creator is going to be the one to judge, right? Understand this. So he's going to speak about God first, 
Because after at, uh, at the end of this dispensation or even the end of the world, there's going to be judgment. All mankind is going to be judged. Whether it be the judgment seat of Christ when we're already in heaven, or whether it be this judge, the great white throne judgment. So God is about to show them about the creator and then bring them to understand that he is the judge. Verse 24, God that made the world, uh, verse 25, neither is worship with what? Amen. So when we say let's worship him, what does this scripture say? He neither is worship with men's hands. Now who is the he here? He's talking about God. As though he needed anything. God don't need you. We need him. Now he, he uses man to accomplish his will, but he doesn't need us. Because whether we are part of the plan or not, his plan is still going to come to fruition. Is that, um, Pastor, that scripture, um, when I read that, uh -huh. neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything, mm -hmm. seeing he give it to all life, breath, and all things. So am I reading this incorrectly? Because the way I'm looking at that, you know how people try to say, well, God is, you know, give God the first of your works yeah. and works in your hands and all yeah. of this stuff. Not only worship like this, but people always try to tell you, well, when you pay your tithe, you worshiping God. Mm -hmm. So this is saying, there's nothing you can do with your hands, whether you lift them up or reach in your pocket to give a dollar. Mm -hmm. He already gave that to you. Exactly. And how are you going to worship him right. with something Amen. that he gave Amen. you? Exactly. And that's, and, that's what, and that's exactly what it's saying. And I was going to get to that as we continue to read that verse. As though he did anything. Said he gave it to all life and breath and all things. God has given it to you. That's why, and, you, and even when it comes to tithe, you have to understand, God gave them the inheritance of land. So they had to tie the land back so that the Levitical priests could eat in the temple. Yeah, the so like, you, so like you said, oh, it was a purpose for it. When we give today money today, as being a cheerful giver, as according to 2 Corinthians 9 and 6, is to help the ministry. Right? Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It's to help the ministry and the person preaching the gospel. Right? But we so ignorantly, not we, but people so ignorantly give all their money to these people not preaching the right message. And they love to use Paul's epistle, uh, 1 Timothy, where it says that they, uh, 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 the man of God is, is worthy of double honor mm -hmm. for him that labor in the gospel. Mm -hmm. So what gospel is he talking about? He ain't talking about this gospel that everybody preaching. So your money should be going to a grace ministry that preaches the righteousness of God right in the Bible. If it's not, you're essentially robbing God as the uh, Jews were by not paying tithe. Right? You're sending your money to these people that's not teaching the truth. Your money is, is nothing. God don't need your money. You're not worshiping him by giving. What you're doing is fulfilling his will by helping the ministry grow. That's the whole purpose of it. That whole, this whole religious concept is so out of bounds. Let me give you an example. It's like a Jew in this time going to give his tithe to a to a, a Greek priest, giving his money, and, and not his money, but his land and, and his herbs and spices, giving that to a Greek priest. Yeah. That's how foolish that's, that is yeah, that's today. That's unheard of, yeah. That would, he would have got stoned for that. Yeah. The, what I'm saying is that the Greek priest was not qualified to receive anything on behalf of God. Right. And that's how these guys are today. They are not qualified they're not Jews, they're not Levitical priests, they're not qualified to even receive tithing on behalf of God because they're in the wrong program. Right, right. Yeah, and that's a very good point. And that is just how foolish it sounds. Just like when you yeah. put when you come into the knowledge of grace and put yourself back under the law, why would you go back under tutors and governors? Those are things you have when you're kids, right? So 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 understand that. But that's that's a good point. Because God doesn't need us. He uses man, he, he partners with man to fulfill his will, but he doesn't need us because he what he gives us all things. Verse 26. And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the what? Earth. Earth. Notice what this says. Had made of what? One blood. One blood all what? Nations. Which is plural. Uh -huh. Of who? Man. That means all races, whether you're black, brown, green, purple, Hispanic, Mexican, Chinese, everybody has blood. Now, I'm not talking about the type A positive, B negative, all that, all that. I'm talking about the blood. From Adam 
all the way to everybody living today, the blood is the same. Mm -hmm. And now that blood of Christ, that's why his, he had to shed his blood on the cross. <laughs> and this God, Paul is instructing them about this God who they're worshiping ignorantly. This God has created all things. He's given us all things. And now he's given us all one blood. And have determined the times before appointed. And the bounds of their what? Habitations. Habitations. So God planned everything out. Even from Genesis 1, uh, uh, 11 when he confounded the languages. He knew exactly where each, uh, each uh, uh, language of each person would go. He planned it all out. He determined the times before appointed. He knew the end be from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And the bounds of their habitation. Why in the world when you go to the beach or you see the ocean, don't the water just cover all of the land? You ever thought about that? No. See, because even the waters have their limitations. It's clearly seen. Jesus. See, the evidence of things, the, 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 the invisible things of God are clearly seen. Mm. Talk about the current. The Jesus. current and all of, that, all of those things, it does not come above land. Unless there's a some kind of earthquake or something, something like that, or a catastrophic thing that which the earth groaned and travailed. But they still have their hell boundaries. They do. They do. Sure. So understand that what is Paul telling them here? Get out of the superstition and stuff y'all learning, and you're worshiping ignorantly and coming to the knowledge of the truth. He's showing them who God is. That they should what? Seek. Seek the Lord. Mm. I, like, I love this right here. If happily they might feel after him. Uh, uh, I was listening to uh, uh, nephew Tommy, and he had a prank call. Uh, I love to watch those prank phone calls. He had a prank phone call about a blind barber. I don't know if y'all heard that one. And he said, I'm a blind barber. I want to cut down there and cut hair. But before you hire me, I want to come down there and feel my way around. But the guy on the other end, he's like, you know, he not thinking nothing about that. And so the guy was like, you know, he told him, man, I'm blind. And the guy was like, well, how are you going to cut hair if you're blind? You can't even see. Mm -hmm. And Tommy said, that's why I said I want to come and feel my way around. You see that? When you, when, as the scripture shows here, if you're seeking for God, it's like you're in spiritual darkness. Uh -huh. yeah. It's blind, but you're Man. feeling your yeah. way around yeah. for it. Yeah. And if you feel it, let's keep reading. That they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and what? Find him. Though he be not far from every one of us. See, when you're seeking for him, you're in spiritual darkness, you got to feel after him. Mm. Right? Right? Man. You see that? And when, and when you feel when you seek him and you feel him after God, he'll send you his truth. Amen. If you're searching and you want to know truth, God will send you somebody to teach it to you. Nice right? Go to uh uh, uh hold on. Let's keep reading. But but it says not from not far from what? Every what? One of us. Acts 14. That's right. Go to Acts 14. Not far from every one of us. That's everybody. If you want to know God, the true and living God that gives the water and the spirit of God, the life everlasting, you can feel him and you can find him. Totally up to you. He don't need you, but he'll find, he'll, 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 he'll uh, reveal himself, uh, illuminate your mind until who he is. Right? Uh, Acts 14, look at verse 15. We, we, we went over this before, but I, I just thought about this. And, and saying, sirs, why do, why do ye these what? Things. These things. Now, this is when they were calling Paul Jupiter and uh, Mercury and all that type of, uh, uh, none of this uh, mythology and all this type of stuff. And uh, so, they, so they're telling them, why, and why did he do these things? Because they had what uh, uh, bowed to, these, to Paul and Barnabas here. And he says, we are also men of like passions with you and preaching to you that ye should turn from these what? Vanities. Vanities, things that don't mean anything. Unto the living God. living God. Notice this now. Which made what? Heaven, Heaven and earth and the sea and all the things that are where? Amen. Who in time past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. When you don't want to listen to God, God is so gracious that he gives you free will not to choose him. Amen. See, God is gracious and he's just. Whatever you want, he'll give it to you. If you want him and truth, he'll give it to you. If you want to live any kind of way you want, he'll let you do that. 
Right? Understand that. Nevertheless, he left not himself without what? Witness. It's going to be somebody who knows God's truth. Amen. Somebody. And that he did what? Good. He did good. Everything made. And gave us what? Rain from heaven. Matthew 5, 45, God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. So all these people talking about, well, in order to be blessed by God, you got to do this. That's not so. I tell people all the time because it didn't most people equate blessings with financial, with money. If that's the case, I knew a lot of uh, uh, atheists who were my teammates who had millions of dollars. And at first, when I, I'm like, God, this person ain't even serving you. How in the world I'm trying to serve you, and they got all this money? Mm. Right? So, but, but God reigns. He, everything is good. He, he, his grace and mercy, he reigns on the just as well as the unjust. He sheds light on the wicked as well as those who are righteous. Understand that. Gave us rain from heaven. And fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. Go to uh, go to First Chronicles. I want to show you what Paul is pointing out here: that God is God. He knows the end from the beginning, the Creator of heaven and earth, the true and living God. The only Bible that's out today that 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 is going to tell you the end from the beginning is the is the Word of God. The Quran don't do it. None of those other Bibles can do it. First Chronicles twenty-eight. First Chronicles 28 and verse 9. Let's start there. Huh? First Chronicles, Old Testament. You thought I said Corinthians? First Chronicles. Verse 9. We have it. And thou saw, this is day of uh, uh, David's son Solomon. And thou, Solomon, my son, knew thou the God of thy father and served him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. See, they had to receive the word with all what? Readiness of mind. So they had a Solomon had a, Solomon had a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. Mm -hmm. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off for what? Yeah. Forever. If you want to find God, he's close to you. I asked a question uh, on the Facebook. I sent out these daily, uh, not daily. <laughs> I try to get them out as frequently as possible. But I sent out scriptures, and, uh, a, little, a little post and some things I write. And one of the things I, I asked the other day is I said,